Well, from our brain's perspective, habits are ways of freeing up all of our cognitive capacity by automating certain behaviours or actions or thoughts or feelings. And so they've got a few things in common. They're generally learned over time by repetition. It's a, it's a behaviour we have or a thought pattern that we have and that we repeat over and over and over again, generally because we get some kind of reward. But in time, they get embedded and hardwired and subcortically in our brain, in a, in a brain region called the striatum. Now, what's important is once they get hardwired in, whether there's a reward there or not, or a motivation or a desire, it doesn't really matter. What happens is a particular cue or trigger will cause that behavior or cause that thought pattern or cause that emotion to just occur without any kind of conscious control over it. And so is that what causes people to be stuck in achieving whether it's their financial results over and over again or business success over and over again or any result in their life? Is it that repetitions of these habits that causes the same results? Yeah, and that's typically you're in a particular environment, you have a particular thought, you encounter a particular person, and then you just have this chunk of behavior or thought pattern that just happens automatically. You don't have a lot of control over that. Yeah. You, you, you're performing that unconsciously. So yeah, you, that happens time and time again, and it's often completely unrelated to any particular goal you might have in mind. And they're very, very hard to break. So when it's a true habit from a neurobiological sense, you have your trigger, you have your habit form, performs itself, and it's very, very hard to kind of unwire that habit, to break that bad habit. And I like to, to consider habits as, as neither good or bad, but yeah. uh, empowering or disempowering, yep. uh, reinforcing what you want, or in some cases, reinforcing what you don't want. Yeah, exactly, right? exactly. And so from a neuroscience perspective, we have uh, habits that you know we think the same way, mm. uh, they cause these emotions, uh, which causes some behaviors. Mm. If we want to change mm. uh, or to create more empowering habits mm. from a neuroscience perspective, mm. what are a few of the things that we can do mm. to, um, Maybe, I don't know, stopping is the right word, but I know that one of the things we want to talk about is talk about how do we refire to rewire yeah. the brain for more empowering habits so we can achieve our financial life, uh, relationship, health goals. Yeah, well, I think the most important thing to do is spend a bit of time to be very mindful about determining what the trigger or the cue is for the particular habit that you don't want to perform anymore. Is it a particular person? Is it a particular place, a particular activity? You know, do you arrive in a certain house? Do you interact with a certain person? What is that cue and what is that trigger that causes that habit? And once you've decided what that is and found out what that, you know, what that particular cue is, then you can learn a new positive behavior, wire a new positive habit in its place. And that's where the refire to rewire model comes in. And it's a six step process that I've developed from my work that I did in neuroplasticity research and pulling from kind of sports psychology and positive psychology, the six step process that, that gives, you, gives you tools and resources and a roadmap in a way to wire in that good new habit in place of the old. Right, and in discussions that you and I have had in the past, you never really uh, remove a bad habit or no. a good habit. You actually can add onto it and create a new pattern that then drives a new trigger or new be emotion, new behavior. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's correct. So you, you can have the same cue. The old habit will stay there. What you want is a new positive behavior in its place. And I think when you understand that it's very hard to unwire a, a, an undesirable habit, if it does reemerge for some reason, I often use that as a, as a bit of a canary in the gold mine kind of time to sort of sit back and assess, not berate myself that yeah. I lack willpower or motivation or desire to change, but that, you know, that's just kind of my brain doing what my brain does and perhaps it's time to just kind of go through that refire to rewire process again, practice a new positive desirable behavior. So what I have just heard, and I'll act as interpreter uh, as well, is let's say you're out of shape and you yeah. get into shape yeah. and then you start to get out of shape a little bit, all you've yeah. got to do is start doing the behaviors that got you into shape to begin with. Yeah, and just be a little bit compassionate with yourself that, you know, you fall into that bad habit again. That's fine, that's normal, that's what we all do. Just take time to just be a bit mindful, reassess your cue and trigger, and then refire that new habit once again. Mm, love it. When we talk about um, being mindful, one of the things I love to share with people is one of the inner sizes that we teach is called AIA, A-I-A. Mm. And the A stands for 
Just be aware of your thoughts, emotions, feelings, behaviors, and sensations without mm -hmm. blame, shame, guilt, yeah. or justification, awareness. Then you use the I for what's my intention, Yeah. right? And then you take one small action to move you towards what you want. Yeah. One small positive action. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does that fit into the neuroscience model for developing a positive habit. Oh, absolutely. And the, and the first letter of refire is R, and that stands for reason. And I'm not a fan of this idea of goals. I find them quite long and linear, and they're in the, in the distance. And often we, I, I think they can be some kind of demotivating or, or fill you with a little bit of fear. It's a goalpost that's too far away. So I like to think of um, this new, new um, change you're making as a project you're working on. It's almost like being in the middle of a great big puzzle. You know when you're doing a puzzle, it's a thousand piece puzzle, and each time you just put one little piece in that puzzle, you feel really feel good. good yeah. Like you feel good, you put one piece in, you sort around for 10 more minutes, you put the next piece in. And the goal isn't, is, well I suppose the goal is to, to create that whole puzzle piece. So you start off but with the vision of yeah, what you want. the vision that you want, yeah. but I mean the satisfaction and that, those little kind of motivation kind of, those little bursts of dopamine, those little feel good moments come each time you put that little piece in. It's just little, these little steps along the journey to kind of keep you going towards this goal which can sometimes seem like this post that's so far away that you're never going to reach the end. Let's go through step by step uh, to, for the refire to rewire process for more positive, empowering habits. Yeah. So sure. number one, you just sure. Said well, is, number one's R is your reason. You know, so wh why? What, what are you? Yeah, why? What are you hoping to do? What's your? What change do you want to make? What's your? Pro I like to think. What's the project that you're working on? Got it. So E is for engage, and there's two kind of parts to engage. One is really just kind of engaging in this new project that you're working on, but engage a team around you, people to help you. Maybe you need a coach or a mentor or a tribe or a team that are kind of working alongside with you because they'll help give you feedback. They'll help motivate you. And if you're kind of um, taking on the role of the coach or the mentor and the guide, it's really important to understand what motivates people to help them tap into their intrinsic motivation, not always provide external goals. So engage really is about engaging and working with other people working on this task. Her. Being in the environment yeah. where you're getting this, these yep. feedback loops. It's so important to, to close it. off those feedback loops. So F is about feelings. And we know that it is far easier to make a change if you're feeling positive, and you have great you know, emotional regulation. Of course, we do know that um, habits can get wired in quite rapidly if someone's in a particularly negative or traumatic or emotional situation as well, which just kind of shows that power of emotion. But if we are involved in putting all those little pieces in the puzzle, working away on that project, we can get in that state of flow. So kind of halfway between um, you know, a, a challenge we're working on that's not too hard, that's not too easy, somewhere between being half asleep and being hyper-stimulated, you're kind of in that, that sweet spot emotionally. That flow zone. That flow zone. And sometimes it, find, you know, it takes a bit of time until you find that right, that, that sort of sweet emotional spot, and you learn to recognize that emotional state, and you can train yourself to get into that emotional state. And you'll have a lot of, a lot of tools in, yeah. your, in your program that help people yeah. tap into that. So that's the F. The next is I, one of my favorites. This is for imagine. Ah. This is about visualization, mental rehearsal, imagination. And our brain doesn't really differentiate between an imagined experience and a real experience. Of course, there are some, some slight differences right. there. But sports people, professional athletes use mental rehearsal to great effect you know, practicing how to kick a goal or, or make a shot in basketball. Musicians can, can rehearse a performance, yep. you know, in their mind's eye. And one of the, one of the really cool, um, I think, uh, tools that you can use visualization for is to rehearse how you're going to respond emotionally to a situation. Perhaps you've got a job interview coming up, you're going to give a talk, you're public speaking, you know, you're going to sit an exam and you typically get overwhelmed with nerves. You can rehearse how you're going to respond in a positively emotional way to that event as well. Mm. So you can train yourself emotionally, not just in terms of motor skills and performance. It's interesting, as, as uh, Dr. Mackay was saying, so I'm thinking about firefighters, you know, who learn how to walk into or run into a burning yeah. building. They have to learn how to respond yeah. instead of react. And that's a, a, a part of mental rehearsal, Absolutely. but also practicing okay, in controlled environments yeah. before the actual event occurs. Yep. And is that to lower the firing threshold, maybe the amygdala and the fear center? Uh, mm. what, what happens in, in the brain when we are mentally rehearsing a behavior we wanna take? Or 
if we're mentally rehearsing something that we want to stop doing. Yeah, I think you've, it's far better to rehearse a, a way that you do want to respond rather than not respond. Because right. if you're practicing how I'm not going to respond, then you're almost practicing the response itself. Is so that, you don't want to practice the negative response. Maybe you want to have a strategy that you're going to for, for, for getting yourself, if you're going to be in that situation, how are you going to choose to respond in, instead? But it, basically, it's a way of practicing when you can't practice. So right. when you encounter the situation for real, your, your mind and your body is in a state of, oh, I've been here, I've done this many times before. This is no big deal. And you right. kind of know what to do. You've, you've rehearsed it without being in the state. Right. You're seeing me so excited because I've got so many questions that you're firing off. But by, by the token of what you've just said, that would also mean if people are consistently ruminating on why things won't work or why they're not good enough or, or what if I fail or what if I succeed, then by what you just said for practicing what they do want, if they're practicing in their brains all the reasons why they can't or why they shouldn't or what might happen, they're reinforcing those patterns. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what negative thought patterns are. And it's pretty easy to get in a, in a kind of a downward spiral of rumination and kind of roll the same idea. It's kind of like rocking on a chair. You never get anywhere, but it gives you something to do. <laughs> so, you know, that thought's going round in your head over and over and over again, and you're not putting any kind of positive action in place to, to, to move you out and on. And yeah, and you do you're basically just rehearsing that situation and ingraining that thought pattern as a habit. And once it's in there, it's going to be very, very hard to break. Got so we have yeah. R for reason, yeah. E for, for engage. engage, F F for feel, for feel emotion, <laughs> I for imagine, I for imagine. And we've got another R. R. I have to remember how to spell here. R. R. R is for repeat. repeat. This is around these ideas of. Um, you know, what fires together, wires together, practice. Neurons. Yeah, neurons and synapses firing together and wiring together. And you want to, um, you know, embed this new thought or, or behavior or habit in a neural circuit. So you want to practice it regularly over and over again. And this sometimes isn't fun. This is where grit and determination come in and where you can get a bit bored and, you know, people don't like to feel frustrated right. and uncomfortable. And so sometimes you've got to cycle back. You know, you're finding this this kind of practicing a bit dull or a bit, you yeah. know, it's not really very enjoyable. Maybe you've got to, you know, re-engage, get back to your reason or, or get your team back yeah. on board or find your flow, find a way to make that, that repeat, repeat, repeat. Right kind of a little bit more enjoyable because if it's not enjoyable it's going to be that much harder but that's grit and determination you've just got to look at the you know the Roger Federer's of the world and the great athletes and the people that have got that real grit and determination you know they've got there with just a yeah. lot of repetition and they've got I think the the emotional reasons why they want to do it one of the, one of the reasons I, I created our programs is to give people a variety of different things to do to activate their curiosity to activate yeah. the tenacity their resolve so yeah. they can so they can do different things so they don't get bored yeah and so we've had R E F I R and the and last the e last is E for extend and this is this idea that I know you're quite a, a fan of John this idea that um, you, you can you can rehearse something until you get it right but the key is and that's what the pros do is that they keep practicing until they can't get it wrong and to Love get it. to that point you've got to extend yourself you've got to get beyond your comfort zone you just can't practice over and over again you guys can't keep hitting a tennis ball back and forth and practicing your serve you've got to extend yourself and get yourself just outside your comfort zone challenge, challenge yourself yeah. And I, and I think I use this analogy of like skiing, you know, you can just ski the blue runs and you'll never get any better. You've got to challenge yourself by skiing the black runs. You've got to take yourself out of your comfort zone. And that's how you kind of add a little bit of that friction in there, a little, little bit of that tension to help wire that, that, have that positive habit in. And then you can cycle back around again, go back to your R and your E and your FIRE again. And, and, and that's why, you know, I, you know, I call a lot of this inner size because you're actually strengthening your neuro muscles the tenacity muscles, your belief yeah. muscles, your habitual muscles, your resolve muscles, so you can achieve goals you didn't achieve before. Yeah. Now, my final question is you've had a chance for a couple of mm. years now to, to see our students who are using our programs mm. and are achieving great results. Yeah. Uh, you've had a chance to review the program yourself. Any thoughts on what you like about the program that people are watching uh, may get from a neuroscience perspective? Mm. Yeah, look, well, I'm, a, I'm a pretty, I'm a pretty um, skeptical, conservative neuroscientist, and I really like to make sure that 
um, what I'm what I'm involved in, what I'm endorsing, is is really strongly based in evidence. And there are a lot of the inner size exercises that you teach that have a very strong um, evidence base. A lot of them are based around cognitive behavioural therapies, the the um, the visualisation and the mental rehearsal that I've just talked about. And I think it's really important for people to realise that there is a, a great amount of, of research, psychology and neuroscience research that's strongly supporting many of these components. And I think that's that's one great part of it. And I think another part of your program, which people um, may not realise when they first come in, is what a great sense of community there yeah. is. And as I say, that's that's the E of ReFire, is engaging with a community. Um, and one of the great fears that many of us have is kind of being alone, sort of maybe standing up above the crowd or outside of our tribe. And we have this social brain that desires to connect. And from the moment we're born, yeah. we need to connect with other people. So it doesn't matter whether you're nine months old, nine years old, 19 or 90. You need the social connection with other people and that's what's empowering and that's what's supportive. And I think that's what will give people that extra encouragement as they're going through. So it's just such a great, great, yeah. powerful piece that you've got going there. Thank you so much.